Everyone, how's it going? It's Mike Wave Sam, and in this video will be part three of how to create a personal website with Bootstrap. Now, in part two, we focused on how to create the navigation bar with Bootstrap. Part three will be solely on carousel. Now, what the carousel is, is it's this sliding mechanism that goes left and right from the template that we've been referring to. And what we currently have is the navigation bar with Microwave Sam logo on the left side, information about home, about portfolio, and social media on the right side. To get started, we want to right-click View Page Source on the template that we've been referring to. Links will be in the description. And one thing that we will do before we get started with the carousel is we forgot to add this favicon. Now, what the favicon is, is whenever you see these icons on the top left of your page these are the favicons and normally people create these .ico files to put as your favicon to retain the pixel and the density and the quality of the low res image but we won't do that and you can refer regular images to the favicon so what we will do is if we go all the way up here after the title we will refer to the favicon, which will be just our regular brand image. So we'll do a link rel icon and we'll href. href stands for the connection of the location. We'll take the image name, which is brand-pick.jpg. As you see over here, image has a brand-pick.jpg and we'll use it. So brand-pick.jpg. And we'll end it with just a greater than. Now we'll, oops, wrong place. So right here is where we want the greater than. Okay, so now if we refresh the page, has not been, oh, so I forgot to put the folder. So image slash brand dash pick dot JPEG. We refresh the page and now we see the microwave SAM logo at the top left, which is good. Now, one thing that I didn't show on the previous tutorial is that the navigation bar looks pretty nice uh, because it's mobile friendly. Okay, so to get started with the carousel, we take the section where the template starts implementing the carousel, which is right at this comment. We can just copy that section, right click copy, and paste it after our navigation bar section. Once we do that, if we control S to save, we refresh the microwave SAM website, nothing appears because the template applies some custom CSS, which you can find at the top of the page. The custom styles for this template is applied. And if we click on it, we can take a look at what they have in carousel.css. So at this customize the carousel section, what they do is they change the height to an absolute value to retain uh, the height location because basically in the navigation bar we do something where we do the Z index and when the Z index is applied then there's a whole stacking kind of idea right so what we have right now is the navigation bar stack or the section is on the top of the stack and we want to add carousel but we need to do some adjustments with the height and make sure that the carousel has an absolute position so that it appears all the time. So if we copy the section and we go to our style.css, we will paste the section after the customized nav bar. And after pasting that section, if we control S, we refresh the page, we can see the navigation bar, or I mean the carousel. Now the carousel is missing something within our website. We don't have the left and right arrows. And the reason we don't have those left and right arrows is because in the first part of the tutorial, I did not think we needed the font icons. So what I mean by that is if you still have your bootstrap folder right here, what I didn't show you guys or tell you guys is that I said the fonts were unnecessary because those were just some special icons if you want to use them. But since we want those left and right icons, we'll right click and copy this folder, open up our personal website workspace, and just paste the folder inside. So now we have this extra fonts folder as you can see over here. If we refresh the bootstrap page of our personal website, we can see the left and right arrows. Now we have something going on. 
And if we take a look, a quick look at the HTML, we can see we have three slides. The data slides are controlled by these carousel indicators. The carousels themselves each have a class differentiate each slide. So for example, first slide, second slide, etc. Each of them has a fake image, so no image appears. And each of them has a caption. Now, and also, um, at the very bottom, there's a left carousel arrow and the right carousel arrow. So what we want to do is we want to add some images that really is representative of what we do or what we want to portray on our personal website. So this is where Google Images comes in handy. And we're going to look for some inspirational backgrounds. So inspirational backgrounds. And we will take something that will be really inspirational that will inspire anybody who visits our webpage. I, I kind of like this. This looks pretty good. So your future created by what you do today, not tomorrow. We'll right click, save this pretty scenic background and we'll call it scenic dash background. And after that's saved, it is saved within our image folder. So I saved it right in our project workspace and we'll change the first slide to that file image. So when you're changing images, always adjust the source. And previously there was a fake image. So we'll just add image slash scenic dash background dot JPEG. And after control S to save that, we'll F5. And the height is kind of messed up. And also the caption doesn't really work here because the words are already in the image. So there are some things that you can erase or keep. So for example, this is really up to you. And this is where the tutorial kind of diverges to what you want. If you want the sliding mechanism, you can keep it. But you don't necessarily have to keep the slider because sometimes the slider might not be for you because maybe you don't have a lot of content or you don't want to be an advertiser because really this template is better for advertising a product or something. But for a personal website, you really don't need these slides unless you've completed some things that are extraordinary. So I will take out the slides and I'll take out the caption because we don't need those two. So what I'll do is I'll delete slides two from three. So up here is good enough for deleting. And now we only have one slide. So what we don't need is since we only have one slide, we don't need these carousel indicators anymore. So I'll delete these carousel indicators. And last but not least, we don't need the left and right arrows anymore. So if you delete the left and right arrows, then you can also delete the fonts folder because you probably won't use the fonts folder anymore in the future if you delete these arrows. So we'll delete the left and right carousel. And now all we have is a caption and the slide. So control S and refresh the page just to make sure what it looks like. So now the carousel left and right buttons are erased, but all you have is this wallpaper. So I kind of like this uh, style just because I don't have a lot of things to show and the slider can make it seem too much like, a, oh, you're advertising a product and you don't necessarily are advertising yourself or a product. So I take the slider out. Now the button and the caption don't look too good. So we'll delete this container section with the example headline and the button. So by deleting this, all we should have is the image. So we control S, refresh the page, and all we have is an image. And now you can actually see the words. But something doesn't look right. The height doesn't look perfect. It's been contorted because in our inside our custom CSS, we can see that dot item greater than symbol image. So basically, this means that the image inside dot item because we have an item class and inside image, the image is set to a default width of 500 pixels, which isn't good enough for our case, but also the whole carousel is just 500 pixels itself. So let's change a couple of numbers. So first of all, we'll change the image height to 1000 pixels and we'll change this height to 1000 pixels 
and the carousel base class to a thousand pixels. When we refresh the page, we can see it's enlarged and it looks much better. But now it looks a little bit too high, right? Because my width of my screen isn't that big, so it looks a little bit contorted. So let's let's uh, compromise a little bit. Let's do 800 pixels, and basically you keep on adjusting until it looks great within your browser. So after adjusting to 800, I think that should be good enough. Maybe 700 would be best. And we'll take 700. That's pretty good right now, but just to finish it off, 650, because I want it to just barely fill up the page. So after saving, this will of course look differently on your uh, personal web page because every screen height is different so you kind of just compromise and see what works for you and what works as average best for the most amount of users so I think 675 is the final number that will look pretty good in all cases so refreshing again and now this looks pretty nice you got that inspirational background you got the navigation bar and the carousel can be treated, instead of just being a sliding mechanism like this, you can have just a wallpaper as a background. And it still looks pretty nice because when you have a sliding mechanism like this, you can probably be advertising different aspects of your webpage, which is good and all. But we're just an individual trying to just tell people what we're doing. So I like to keep it simple. I like to keep one slide with no arrows. And that's basically it for the carousel. So customize it, feel free to add some things and feel free to keep the slides if you want. But I personally don't like the slides so I just showed you how to delete them. Thanks for watching, part 4 will be coming soon so stay tuned.